So to start this build, I'm ripping down some boards and the lumber I'm using for this is actually some old decking board someone gave me. And this is an exotic lumber. It's Caillou Batu. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's, it's used in decking. It's a very durable material and it kind of has a reddish uh, finish to it. So I'm cutting these into slivers. I cut them down to size and then I'm cutting them into slivers. And what I'm going to do is just laminate a blank and then make the handle. So these handles are going into an old Ford from the 1940s. And the guy that orders these handles from me does all the interior work, the upholstery work on the inside. And then he likes to put custom handles in there. So these don't have to be anything um, to match an existing handle because those cars did not have them most of the time. So they're just a very basic handle. So what I try and do is make them visually appealing to make up for the lack of detail work in them. So for this, the outside of the car, this is just taking that, that decking and cutting it into the sizes I need to glue up for my laminate. So you can see now that I have that, and I'm just going to put them all together. So it's the Caillou Batu on the bottom, and then I'm putting these thin slices of maple. I already had these thin slices of maple, and then a, another very thin slice of the decking material, another thin slice of maple, and then a thicker slice of the decking material. So that maple is going to mimic pinstriping, and there's pinstriping on the outside of the car, which... Um, the guy that's doing the upholstery kind of pointed out to me so I wanted to match that that thin look of the pinstriping on the inside of the car and this lumber also somewhat matches the interior color that he picked as well so once I have all that laminated together I could clamp these um, in place and then let them set up probably overnight So the big thing with this is you're, you're making sort sure that the, you have um, good coverage with the glue. You don't want any, any um, spots where that glue isn't seeping out the sides to give you voids. So the next morning I could come in and take all those clamps off and I could start cleaning these up. So this glue up was really clean on both of them. So sometimes I would have to go through and, and plane these a little bit before I could take them to my table saw. But these were nice and clean, so I could take the clamps off and just start um, rough cutting them out right away with my cross-cut sled. So you could see I'm raising the blade, and I could take that back side's pretty flat, so I could just rip down the side right away, and then um, do that on both of these, take off that excess. And then I could turn them on edge and, and rip them down as well. So I'm working off of a template. I've made a couple of these style handles for him before. So they're always pretty much the same size. So I'm just making sure I stay within the thickness and the width I need. But um, once again, removing all that excess. You can see once you take all the glue spots off, you can see the nice detailing of, of that, the brown lumber against that white starkness of the maple. They almost kind of look like cookies at this point. So this is, this is the paper template I'm working off of. And because I've made a couple of these before, um, those marks I just marked are where the, the screw holes are going to go. I ended up turning this into a plywood template so that I could easily reproduce these without taking measurements every time he comes by. So this is a really easy process and if you're going to be making multiples I always recommend um, transferring these into uh, a wooden template. Now the nice thing about wooden templates is, is, is if you have a wooden template you can then usually route out these pieces. I didn't route out these pieces because they were um, small enough that using a straight cutting bit on this would be more work than how I ended up doing it, which was on the table saw. But um, it was still nice to have this template. As you can see, I'm, I'm just marking where those those screw, screw holes are going to go, and then I just use my jigsaw to rough this out. And then the repeatability of, of per objects is so much easier when you're working off of, off of one jig or one template. It doesn't, sometimes if you're, you're making multiples and you make each multiple unique, small inconsistencies in your pattern um, can be multiplied across, across 
eight or nine nine different pieces but if you're working off of one original that kind of um, eliminates that problem so then I take that and I just clean it up on the on my belt sander stationary belt sander and then like I said I have a nice a nice original to work off of for for these car handles so all I did was I used a scrap piece of wood in order to stabilize this handle on my crosscut sled and then I could just go through and take off the bulk of the excess right on the the crosscut sled and this will leave a nice clean cut so you could see by using that piece of wood this can't um, move around on me and I could cut out most of those pieces now for the center I just raised the blade and did a series of curve cuts so that I have the opening in the back and that's important because you want that opening to be a consistent depth so if you grab it with your hand um, it feels right in your hand so those are only going to be vertical cuts so now I have to make the angled cut and I just did that with a hand saw I trimmed up those pieces in my vise and then just cleaned up that excess so this is a pretty pretty easy build by my standards I can pump these out fairly quickly and people seem to really like these um, I would say the car handle videos on my channel I've gotten the most emails about and people that have wanted me to make them so for me this is kind of one of those I sp videos like this I sometimes don't even think about posting because they're so simple and quick and not these big elaborate projects but people really really especially people that like to customize their cars enjoy these sorts of videos so once I had that done you could see I was just taking it and sanding it to my line and then what I'm gonna do is I have a chamfer bit in my router table and I'm chamfering all the edges except for those back edges where it's gonna meet the fabric of the um, upholst upholstered sidewall of the door you don't want to have a chamfer there and that is just to um, make rounding over the handle much easier it removes a lot of material so that chamfered angle is going to be left and then I can just take it back to my sander and completely round these over so like I said you could see now I have that chamfered chamfered bit and it's just a little bit of material I have to remove now instead of completely creating that rounded over edge so I could just kind of wiggle it back and forth on the belt sander and get a nice clean finish sometimes I take it to um, the disc sander on the side as well see it's super easy to just just um, round over that chamfer also at, I'll eventually remove all those sharpie marks as well so then to get the inside just use the edge of that that belt sander so then this these are pretty much the finished handles like I said they're very simple so the the design is in the detail not so much um, the design is in the layering of the wood not so much any sort of detail added to the handles so then I just take my random orbital sander and and really clean up those edges so for the holes I drill a smaller hole at first and I use I've tried drilling these before I've rounded these over to make life easier but they never end up lining up perfectly in the end so I just drill a smaller hole once they're finished and then I could go through with my spade bit and you're not drilling all the way through the piece because that that screw head has to catch on something so I go about halfway through with those and then I could start coating these so like I, I keep saying very simple project there's really not much to it I'm putting general finishes on these um, I'll put this one coat and then I'll sand pretty aggressively because this is gonna raise some of the grain sand with probably 220 and then after that I'll put two or three more coats and then sand with um, about 600 in between each and then I'll have my my finish handle so you could really make these any size you want but the rough measurements for mine are they're about nine and a half inches long about three inches deep and they're about a little over an inch and a half thick 